we'll see how that goes. And, uh, going through stress at work, everybody's got it though. So I don't see it as any more different than anybody else. Some people get more stressed than others when we have um, what they consider a lower lifestyle. It's harder to stay employed sometimes. People see you as a sandwich, you know, a lot, and they think that they can just, you know, fire you or knock you out of your job, like, you know, because it's so competitive, work is, or they just think that, you know, that you're not right and they need to have you somewhere else, or they think you look like a sandwich, you know, it's sad because, you know, in this world it's not, it doesn't have to be dog eat dog, you know. There's so many other jobs we can get, you know, or move around in, you know, and let them have their way. Jehovah still keeps us afloat and keeps us able to stay alive, you know, regardless of what other people do, if we just keep trying. But sometimes it doesn't turn out that way. Sometimes the bad thing happens and we turn out homeless, you know, and a lot of people condemn people for being homeless, but there's really no reason to do that. Uh, you know, homeless people are just a product of the system of things, just like when little kids get cancer or pe grown adults, teenagers get cancer or they have these flesh-eating diseases where they lose their whole arm or leg, you know, or part of their body eats their flesh, you know. It's, it showed videos of it happening to a lot of young adults, which, you know, or young children, or young teenagers, which is really sad because, you know, then they lose quality of their life in the system of things. Of course, the real life is the paradise anyway, but, you know, it sure isn't fun to one day have, you know, your life and be, you know, living it to the, to a good, you know, to be happy and living your life, you know, even though we all have to struggle in this world anyway, but, you know, our health makes things go downhill really fast if we lose our health. And there's all kinds of other things that we can happen in old age, you know, can get us killed real easy. People are always trying to knock us off, you know, because they see us as essentially, you know, something that they can eat, you know. Something that they can go after in this world and they think if they cause... you know, us to lose our job and our way of life and be homeless that, um, or our quality of life, that they can uh, feel better about themselves and then their health, you know, their body and their life prospers. I don't know what makes them feel like that's something that they can do, but a lot of people really think that that's the way to go sometimes. Or, I don't know, they feel that need, I guess, to do that. This is just about melted. It's sad because, you know, we're not in their position and they, you know, I don't know why they people think that they can do that. For some reason they've been led to believe that that's the way to fight, your, you know, for your life in this world. You know, that it's always a struggle and it's about knocking somebody else off the totem pole and, you know, you get a notch higher, but it's, it shouldn't have to be that way. That's also part of the system of things, I guess, you know, but, but it doesn't make it any less appealing, or any more appealing to somebody like me that, that is constantly have to go through that, you know, or someone else that, you know, has to live their life dealing with people that think that, you know, that that's how it goes, and, and to come after people like that. I have this in a Ziploc bag, trying to keep it dust free, but I think I might have had it set out for a few hours one day when I was test looking at it. And it's got little pieces of dirt in it or something. Oh yeah, I got them cleaned out pretty much now. I think it's melted. So here we go. We're going to try putting this in there.
look smelling like aloe vera. <laughs> Turn that fan off. Ooh, it's hardening up. Here, let me cook it, leave it on here. <laughs> when I put that in there, it caused it to <coughs> cool off quick. So now it's not melted anymore. <coughs> so now I gotta let it melt again. I got one of my hairs in there. I got it out. So now I gotta let it melt again. The puppy dogs, somebody's puppy dogs are out there barking. I don't mind it though, it don't hurt me at all. Long snake barking at me. They sound like they're doing innocent barking, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't feel like it's I'm out I'm in the house anyway, they probably don't even know I'm in here. So whatever they're barking at. I don't know. Well now I've got so much melt and pour or so much of this ground up soap to put in here, it doesn't seem to be melting. <laughs> Wait a minute, there it is. It's it's trying to melt. Let me turn it down a little bit. I might have to cut up some more melt and pour in there. Maybe I'll do that. It looks like it might work as a um, As a way to do this, I'm just going to shave up some pieces. Oops. Let me turn it this way. Into the into this pot. Let me cut my. There's a pantry door there, so I don't look like a funny background or something. I'm going to melt some of this melt and pour again. Now this is going to take forever. <laughs> this is my first time trying this, I guess, so it's got to take a long time to do it. I don't want a big long upload, though, because I don't have any way to edit this video, and I don't want it to be real long. I was kind of hoping to say my words that I wanted to say and get this done and poured and over with about, you know, in about five minutes or so. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to take a little longer than that. Because now i got to melt all this other melt and pour again. Let's see what happens now. Bubble bubbles. Playing with soap. I don't know what it's trying to do. It's just soap. I don't want to add water to it. I want it to be a bar of soap that um, I can just put in the mold and let it sit, you know, for let it cool off and then it's just going to be hard like a bar of soap. But it doesn't want to do right. It's wanting to Give me a hard time. You just dump the big old clunk of it in there. Where did it go? I guess it dissolved into my big old pot of water that I've got as a double boiler. 
Come on, so melt. I've got it turned up. and do a little bit like a hot process so I can get it fluid enough to get it in the soap balls. It's in the world. Which means I might not be able to get it out of the mold today. Might have to wait till in the morning. I hate having to rebatch, you know. I mean, I could just use the soap myself, but I thought I might try to make some small bars and give them away, you know, and make them look pretty by putting them in that mold. <clears throat> that way, you know, people might get interested in my soap or making their own soap. I really haven't sold any soap yet. I used to sell melt and pour and I'd put some essential oils with it and decorate it. And I did sell a few, but not that much. And then uh, I gave up on that and I always was selling perfume solids. I was able to do that. <clears throat> but when COVID started, I stopped doing it because everybody, you know, needed to get their pantry stocked up at the store. So. I just kind of quit selling it. Plus, I was working a lot at the time. So I thought, well, I'll just stop for a while and maybe pick it up later. You know, things get better. Because I don't want to make people buy my stuff, you know, if they uh, needed to be or wanting to be stocking their pantry up and needing the money for that. So, I mean, it was only like, you know, $7 or $8 you know, with the shipping included to buy my perfume salads, but I thought, well, I'll just stop for a while. People can stock up their pantry, you know. Might not have got many sales anyway. So, Then I got into making my my own soap, my own homemade soap, cold process. And uh, I haven't sold any of that yet. Because, I don't know, I'm still in the... I've been doing it for two years, plus I work full-time most of the time so I'm kind of in the experimental stage you know of getting a good recipe because the recipe they give you on the online or on the, yeah online and on YouTube they're good recipes it's just that I want to make it more moisturizing or have maybe a soap that you can use that is cleansing like dial soap you know that they got at the store and some that's like dove soap 
or more moisturizing. It doesn't have to necessarily be like Dove soap. I just put a bunch of cocoa butter bit in there or shea butter and, you know, and add my super fats and then I'll have a moisturizing soap. So I'm kind of in the experimental stage trying to figure out how to make my own, you know, recipe. And I don't really know a lot about measurements or anything. Just the fact that you can change the super fat, you know. And I know a little bit about the oils and, you know, how cleansing each oil is and how well it does like coconut oil is really cleansing they say and uh, cocoa butter and chia butter you know you can make soaps out of those too but you won't get much of a lather which means that the cleansing factor goes down but the you know at the same time you do get a little bit of a cleansing factor but you don't have to but you don't get as much as you would if you use just plain coconut oil. And then you can also have a moisturizing coconut oil soap though. <laughs> if you add more coconut oil to your recipe, <clears throat> which means that, you know, whatever amount that you put in for sodium hydroxide, you leave the same, you just add extra oil, extra coconut oil, extra Shea butter or shea butter, extra uh, cocoa butter, extra any kind, any vegetable oil that you can use that you buy in the store, you know, that you use to fry with. Crisco, you can put in there, lard, beef fat, they call it, I think that's tallow, avocado oil, all kinds of oils you can use for um, making soap. Yeah, just look it up on uh, YouTube or um, go to Soap Calc or one of those soap um, things that, like Soap Calc will show you, you know, how to do this, make a, make a recipe. It'll help you do that. And then you just do a little experiment on your own and find out what kind of, like olive oil, if you do straight olive oil, it's not going to be as cleansing as straight coconut oil. And it's not going to be as bubbly. But people over in other countries use straight olive oil all the time to take a bath with. They use olive oil and then the sodium hydroxide, you know, or potassium hydroxide makes a liquid soap. So all you got to do is look it up on the YouTube or the internet and get on soap calc or something and type it in. And it may not be what you expect, so sometimes you have to, um, sometimes you have to, uh, figure out what you want yourself. And then you can come up with a a recipe you like because you might think that it's not going to be creamy because on soap calc it'll show you creaminess and bubbly and all that cleansing and then it doesn't turn out how you th how it says it's going to for whatever reason maybe you use something different or did something different or maybe it just doesn't do it the way it says so you just you have to work with it people that are you know um, better soapers than me um, can do something a little quicker, you know, to get theirs. To get their recipe. Sometimes they have um, recipes handed down from their mother or their grandmother that they've had for years. And they uh, have a good recipe or a good guideline for a good recipe to start with, you know. <clears throat> and they just change it around like... Back in the old days, you know, they used less super fat. Sometimes they might have. Depends on what you want to use it for. Like if you're going to wash clothes, you know, or you only take a bath every six months or once in winter, once a winter, you know, you don't take a bath every winter, you know, all winter long every day, or you only take a bath in the wintertime, you know, 
every once a month or something, or then you're going to want something that cleans you better. Or if you know, if it depends on how poor or rich you are and how much heat you got in the house. So the recipes were a little different back then, and uh, they've got all kinds of different ways of making so uh, soap again now too. They make those soap noodles, and uh, that you buy. You can make a better shampoo because some of the shampoos you make with homemade soap is. Um, every time I put keep putting water in this, it keeps getting hard. <laughs> and then I can't pour it. So I don't know if it's the nature of the soap or what. I'm trying to get it all melted and all liquidy. And about the time I get to that point, it starts hardening up, hard as a rock. Well, not hard as a rock, but, you know, a real. it doesn't want to stay melted. <laughs> so it looks like I'm doing a hot process, I reckon. I think I've got, got, I think I'm just going to leave it in there with some of these chunks. Because otherwise I'm going to be stirring this all night long. I think we're going to pour. I got a lot of water in there now. And it's pretty runny. Can't hardly see it, but well here it goes. Let's see if I can... Pour it in these molds. See, I've got some big pieces in there, but if I wait too long, it's not going to ever. I won't ever get a bar of soap out of it. This might have to sit for a few days. It's hardening up fast. Well, anyway, here it is. Interesting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There it is. There's one. There's one. There's the other. And again, I'm gonna. This video editing stuff or videotaping is hard for me to do. It's getting hard already. Well, anyway, I'll bring you back when it gets hard. If I can, if unless I have to wait a few days, and then I'll do it later in a few days. Okay. Thank you. Bye.